Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. This is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Serving us today, I am Pastor Susan Christian. Our technology person is Mike Wick. Projection is Karen Torkelson. Our children's message will be done by Patty Gadkey. Our assisting minister is Don Christian. And our reader this morning is Marie Stark. Uh, some sad news for all of us. We have uh, Bob Wallace Sr. passed away this past Thursday morning. His service will be this coming Thursday at 11 o'clock at Krieger's. The service will also be Zoomed if you'd like to watch it from home. And another sad announcement this morning is Bishop M.J.H. Ubani of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Southern Africa died on January 28th, this week ago. Bishop Ubani was both the Bishop of the Western Diocese and the presiding Bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Southern Africa. The bishop's brother, M. Reverend Mathaldi Ubani, also died within hours of the bishop. Bishop Joe Ubani was a treasurer of the Western Diocese in 2006 and enthusiastically welcomed the visit with the Zemers and the Overhogs to the Lakubu Parish and supported the companionship relationship between our Synod and the Western Diocese. Don Candle. Let us pray for the Yubani family in this terrible loss and for the Western Diocese and the Elsa in the deep effects this will have on them. May God's Holy Spirit lead them through this time in their grief, and into new leadership. The green candle is our Lakubu candle, and we light it today not only in honor of our companionship relationship with them, but in memory of the bishop and his brother. We will have a new book study starting the Book of Joy, we will Zoom twice to discuss the book at the end of February and at the end of March, dates and times to be announced, depending on the group consensus. Contact the church office or Pastor Kathy to let them know you are reading the book and wish to participate in the conversation. Our devotion for this Lenten season is a story to tell. You should have probably received it in the mail by now. Uh, please join Pastor Kathy and Peg Dart Thomas for a fellowship and review of the week's devotions. That'll take place on Saturdays at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Uh, again, contact Pastor Kathy for the link. And then on Ash Wednesday, that's coming up, really quick. Uh, our Ash Wednesday service will be pre-recorded, available via YouTube on February 17th. P please pick up a small packet of ashes with instructions for preparing in the church festival beginning February 7th. Prepare your heart for a time of confession and reconciliation and help your children do the same. Also on Ash Wednesday, Disposition of the Ashes will be available for our congregation and the greater Tomahawk community on Ash Wednesday the 17th. A pastor will meet your car under the vestibule overhang, that's the entry by the parking lot, and safely administer ashes and the words of desolation under the Grace Lutheran Festival. Times that there will be pastors available out there are 
7.30 to 9.30 in the morning, 11.30 to 1.30, and 4 to 5.30. And our special offering for this month will be for Tave. Okay. That's all? That's plenty, isn't it? Okay. Our gathering hymn this morning is Gather Us In, and it will be sung by the Grace Congregation. Here in this place a new light is streaming, now is the darkness vanished away. See in this face our fears and our dreaming, brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. Let us continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. 
Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away. And we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconcil reconciling peace. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah 40, 21 to 31. The Judeans in exile had a good reason to be hopeful. The one who will bring them to freedom is the God who created the world, the God who subdues the ruler of the earth and gives strength to those who are weary. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the very beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain, and spread them like a tent to live in, who brings peace to the naught, and makes the rulers of the earth say nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, and scarcely have their stems taken root in the earth. When he blows a bomb above them, and they offer and wither and die, and the tempests carry them off like stubble, to whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength and mighty in power, and not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He is understanding and is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm for this morning is from the book of Psalms 147, 1 through 11. Hallelujah, how great is it to sing praises to our God. How pleasant is it to honor God with praises. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exile of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. And the Lord lifts up the lowly and casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving and make music upon the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making the grass to grow upon the mountaintops. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the mighty of a horse and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord and those who await God's steadfast love. Alleluia. 
We will now have our children's message given by Patty Gatke. Hello, children of God. When you get hurt or sick, there are things that, that you can do that can help you feel better. For example, when you uh, get, um, you could use a Band-Aid to put over a small cut or a scrape, or perhaps you have an itch or sore muscles and you can put ointment on it. Or maybe you even get a big cast if you break a bone. And if you have the flu or an infection, you might have, been, have to take medicine to feel better and get rid of those germs inside your body. All of these things help our bodies to heal and to feel different. Well, in the gospel for today, we learn about Jesus's healing. In this story, Jesus visited Simon Peter's home. And there he found that Peter's mother-in-law was very sick with a fever. When Jesus found out that Peter's mother-in-law was sick, he was moved by compassion and he took action. We read from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 31. Jesus, let me find it here. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. Jesus saved the woman with a touch of his hands. Jesus healed her. Wow. When Jesus healed the sick woman, he didn't use any medications at all. It was a miracle. Because what did he do? He held her hand. We learn that Jesus kept going to other people too after he healed her. He didn't just wait for them to come to him. And like Jesus, we can take action too. In the same way, we get to go out into the world and show the world we care just like Jesus. Caring for the hurting and sick is a special way of showing Jesus's love. These days, there's a lot of talk about sickness, isn't there? People everywhere are worried about the coronavirus. You know, take time, think of someone you know who is in need of healing. Send that person a card to let them know you're thinking of them or call if possible and take time to brighten their day with a conversation. And you can bring their needs and your own needs to Jesus in prayer. And we're not just talking about the physical healing. We're also talking about the emotional hearings, healings. Where, what pains you? What makes you ache? What thoughts do you have that you need healing for? Remember the good news. Jesus is the true healer. And Jesus, as Jesus healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law, because Jesus cared about her. And Jesus cares about and heals us too. And this gives us hope and healing, peace and love. And we can hope in his presence and trust in his loving care. So remember, Jesus cares and, and know that he hears our prayers. This week, pray for those who are sick and hurt and ask Jesus to give them health and comfort. Let us pray. God of hope and healing, Lead us into the world with good news that serves and loves, other, love, loves others through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now go, share God's love, and share Je Jesus' care. God loves you, and so do I. Our second reading this morning is from the book of 1 Corinthians 9, 16 to 23. God entrusted Paul with the responsibility of bringing the gospel to, to diverse people. Hence, the focus of Paul's ministry is not his own rights of privileges as an apostle, but the privilege of serving God by freely sharing the good news of Christ with others. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. 
for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charges, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free and respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am also under Christ's law so that I might win those outside of that law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you this morning from our triune God. Do you like to wait? I sure don't. Patience is not one of my virtues. I don't think that most people like to wait. When I was on internship, my daughter and her husband and my new grandson were flying down to Fort Smith, Arkansas to spend Thanksgiving with us. That night at the airport, I was bouncing off the walls just about waiting for them to get there. And then I got worse once the plane landed. I was standing just outside the security line in the waiting area. The poor guard kept saying to me, lady, be patient. They will get here, and whatever you do, don't cross the red line on the floor, or all the alarms will go off, and gates will start locking down, and we will have a real problem. 
I think that poor guard became gray that night as I waited, not very patiently, for my grandson. This was the first Thanksgiving after the 9-11 attacks, so he had reason to worry. Well, how often, then, have you heard the words, just wait and see? I know that I use them a lot with my mom. Even though I use them, I sure don't like to hear them directed at me. No one, it seems, likes to wait for anything. Why should we? Waiting is a waste of time. And sometimes waiting can get quite unbearable. Our society today does not like to wait for much of anything. The Israelites had been in Babylonian captivity for many years. For a long time, they'd waited for God to deliver them, and they'd almost given up hope. The wait was just too long. It seemed hopeless. God had seemed to have forgotten them. But then along comes this prophet who tells them God has not forgotten them. God was even then coming to deliver them, to bring them back home. They just had to wait for the Lord, and the Lord would lift them back home on eagles' wings. And God did just that. But how tough it must have been, and how tough it had to have been to hold on to their faith. Maybe some of you feel the same way. You've suffered for so long and wonder if God still cares about you. You may feel exhausted, weak, and ready to give up. The message here is that even though we can't understand why things are the way they are or happen as they do, we can know that God knows, God cares, and God will act for our good. The word to us is, wait for the Lord. And what does that mean, wait for the Lord? How do we do that? Isn't waiting something that we all dislike to do? Or is this that kind of waiting? Is this being passive? Or is, it, or is there an active aspect to this kind of waiting? Is it sitting and wringing our hands in anxiety? Or is it eager expectation, watching, anticipating the hand of God to touch us? To wait is to trust in God, to place our faith, our well-being each day, each moment, into God's hands. It is to affirm and keep affirming, no matter the circumstances, that we belong to God, that God loves us, knows our needs, and will act to minister to us in God's own time and way. Our psalm today gives us some great insights into how to wait for the Lord. Praise God, even in your pain. There we are told to praise God. Yes, praise God, even when all we sense in our need and God's absence. Praise is to remember the greatness and goodness of God. It is once again the raising of our eyes above the present circumstances to rest upon God, who God is, and all that God has done for us. While you wait for God, count all your blessings. That will keep you busy. This is not so difficult or unusual as you may think. In my own experience, I have seen it so many times. One of my parishioners on internship was a man about 50 who had had both of his legs amputated and had all sorts of medical problems. 
Even though he was confined to a wheelchair and needed help to do almost everything, I never heard him say when I visited him, Why me, Lord? But you know what? He talked much more about how grateful he was for all that God had done for him. And he would say, God has been good. Yes, he would have rather not been as ill and as incapacitated as he was, but he also knew how many blessings he had. He was not lying in a hospital bed, but soaring on the wings of eagles. Remember the story of Paul and Silas and how they'd been thrown in prison? What did they do? Whine and cry and sing the blues? No, they sang songs of joy and praise. An earthquake came and the prison bars opened. God was at work, even in their hardship. We also learn about God's steadfast love in Psalm 147. We're told to keep our focus on this hope, the steadfast love of God. We might think in the midst of some trying circumstance that God has left us, that God's love is our love, or like the love that others have expressed for us sometimes. You know, fickle, not reliable, not there when you need it. Not so with God. God loves us, no matter how the present circumstances may say otherwise. Keep on believing in God's love for you. Keep your heart set on it. Now, I had some tough days at seminary. Nothing went right. My paper wasn't as good as it needed to be, even after I'd put my heart into doing it. I felt like quitting and giving up. But I talked to my mom or my kids, and their words of love and encouragement lifted me back up. And I felt that I could continue. I felt that I was like an eagle's wings. Love does that, you know. God's love came to me through them. God's love finds a way to us, to lift us. Remember the hymn, Love Lifted Me? That is just what love will do. God loves you, no matter what. Don't forget that when you are low and life isn't going the way you think it should. In today's gospel lesson, there is an insight on how to wait for the Lord. Jesus has made a great start. He was popular with many. He got a following. It seems wherever he goes, there are people waiting to see him. People are coming to him to be healed. But he was troubled. The people weren't really coming to him for their spiritual needs. They wanted something else from him. Jesus went out early in the morning to seek a quiet place to pray. He was waiting, waiting to see what God's direction for him was going to be. Should he stay and build on what he was doing, or does he keep going and proclaiming the good news? He got his answer. He will keep moving. He will do what God has called him to do. While we wait for the Lord, while we wait for direction, it is always good to spend time in prayer and meditation. Prayer is lifting our hearts, eyes, and voices to God. Prayer is active waiting. Prayer will connect you to God, keep you more open and alert to God's direction in your life. It can also give you a sense of peace. Just telling God how you feel. If you've had a day where you think the rest of the world has ignored you, God is always there to listen to you. You don't have to be in church to pray or at home. Wherever you are, you can offer up a prayer to God and you can listen for God. 
having faith, praising God, being confident in God's love, and sharing our hearts with God in prayer. All of these things begin to lift us up. The very act of faith, of lifting up our eyes, takes our eyes off ourselves, off the pain of the moment, and helps us to focus on the one who has created us and loved us. The image of Peter walking on the water comes to mind. He was okay until he took his eyes off Jesus. Then he began to sink. But even then, Jesus was there to reach down and lift him up. Waiting for the Lord is keeping our eyes on God our focus above the chaotic waters of our lives that are threatening to overwhelm us and drown us. It is that assurance that no matter what, we are in God's hands. So wait for the Lord with your eyes lifted up, your voices filled with praise and prayer, and your hearts holding on, knowing that God loves you. Amen. We will now have our prayer shawl blessing. Our women, and I think they're all women, have been working all these many months of the pandemic to provide them for us. And we have prayer shawls, we have lap robes, and we have baby blankets for the baptismal families. And the, it's the square ones that are the lap robes. Uh, we have plenty, so feel free to, to stop at church and get some uh, for some friends or family that you feel might need them. We will now bless them. God of creation, redemption, and sustaining grace, we praise you for the opportunity to take part in this ministry so that we might see a world beyond ours. We thank you for putting those in need on our hearts and in our minds so that we might fully live out your call to love and serve. We ask that you bless these shawls and blankets and, and those who will receive them. May they feel the love, comfort, and peace of your presence. And may your light shine in them and be a beacon of the hope that is promised to us all. Amen. May the power of the Holy Spirit live and breathe within each of us through these shawls and through the lives that they will touch. Shower us all with your loving grace, O oh God. Amen. Our next hymn, it's the hymn of the day, is O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
Let us profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital hospice and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the nations, for all who lead the cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom and service to those in most in need, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain, and other sickness for those exhausted from overwork or stress and for all who cry out to you especially let us pray have mercy O God for this congregation for outreach and social ministries centered here for parish nurses and visitors for ministries of companionship and support for the young people in the place, in this place who open us to new understanding, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O oh God. God. In thanksgiving for the, faith, the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest for their labors, that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
This is the time of our service where we take our offering. This month, our special offering is for the Tomahawk Area Interfaith Volunteers. And church leadership would like to thank all of you who have been so faithful in making sure that your regular weekly offering got here to the church. It allows us to continue our ministries. We will now have our offering prayer. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. We continue with our Holy Communion. At this time in our worship today, we shall continue with our Holy Communion liturgy. During this most unusual time of the corona pandemic, we'd like to provide you the opportunity to commune as part of the live streaming services. Small containers containing communion supplies for the numbers of communing individuals in your family will be marked for you to take home from the church office. We would ask that you pick these up on a weekly basis so there will be plenty of communion supplies as other members come for those supplies weekly. You may provide your own bread and wine if you so desire. The communion service liturgy will include the consecration of the communion elements each week so that you would have opportunity to commune at whatever service you are so able. We begin in prayer. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready.
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Marie, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ will strengthen and sustain us now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ shed for you. Amen. <clears throat> the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn today is, I Love to Tell the Story.
Go in peace and love and share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>